Today, you are going to learn about a new HTML element that is going to probably make your life as a developer quite a bit easier, as I know I use stuff like this all the time. So what am I talking about here? Well, I'm talking about the new dialog element in HTML that is going to allow you to create things like modals and like sub pages, even have form pop ups and stuff like that. So if we look at the Mozilla developer network docs here, we see this kind of example of using this. So if I click show dialogue, you see that we get this little kind of dialogue, this little pop up in which it kind of is this sub page within our overall page. And it kind of gives the background of this page, this gray kind of outline and it's just kind of this pop-up for our page and this could be a form it could be a select box like what they have here and then i cancel it and it goes back to our other page all right so html now has this built in with a dialogue component as you can see right here and within this dialogue component there's a few different ways that you can use this and towards the end of this video i will show you an example of creating a React component with this dialogue. So creating your own custom dialogue and just using this HTML for it and not having to pull in some external library like Material UI or something like that. Now, could you still do that? Absolutely. And in my day-to-day -day career, we still use like Material UI for our dialogues and stuff, but you can now do it just natively within HTML. And I generally think that that's probably a good thing to do. So when using this dialogue, it gives you a couple of methods kind of right out of the box to close or open the dialogue. So for the dialogue element, you can call the show modal or show methods on this element to have the dialogue kind of pop up and to actually show it. And for this modal, you can also call the close method and that will close the dialogue. And in addition to that, it also has an open property, which will indicate whether the dialogue should be open or closed. So there's multiple ways to do it. You can either call the show or show modal methods, or you can use the open attribute to dictate whether the dialogue is open or closed or not. And you can also use the close method to close the dialogue. Now, Another kind of note with this, or a couple of notes with this, is that form elements, they can close a dialog if they have the attribute of method is equal to dialog. So if you have a form element and you set the method attribute of that form element to dialog, then as soon as you submit that form, it's going to close the dialog. So you can also use dialogues with forms pretty seamlessly which is quite nice and then in addition to this you know how you see how the the gray behind this example so when we show the dialogue here it kind of grays the background here well you can kind of change that behavior that default behavior with the backdrop property or the backdrop pseudo element here so if i can find where i was just at so right here the backdrop CSS pseudo element can be used to style the backdrop that is displayed behind a dialog element when the dialog is displayed with the show modal property. Okay, so you can kind of dim the background of your dialog with this backdrop CSS pseudo element. Okay, so that's kind of an overview of this element and how to use it, but let's actually head on over to VS Code here. And what I've done is I just did MPX create your React app, just a very basic React app. And now let's show you how you can actually create a React component. And I'm going to kind of do this live here and hopefully I don't mess up how to use this dialog component. So first off, I'm going to, and I was about to type yarn start because we use that in our kind of day to day application. So I'm used to using that, but I don't have that installed. So we're just going to npm start here. And as you can see, I just have a blank page to where I say, this is my app. And if I go back to my code editor, that's because in my app.js, I just render out, this is my app. Okay, so we are going to close this. And now what I'm gonna do is create a dialogue component. So 
in my SRC folder, you could create a additional folder called components and stuff like that if you wanted to have maybe a better structure of your app. I'm not going to worry about that right now because I'm just creating a single component for a dialog to see or to show a couple of different ways to use this. So I'm just going to do a new file here and I'm going to do dialog.jsx. And all I'm going to do here is create a dialog component. So export default. If I could type today, that would be great. Function. And as you can see, I'm using. Um, I think I'm using GitHub Copilot right now, so it's giving me some autocomplete suggestions and stuff. I'm going to try not to use that for the sake of illustration here. I'll have definitely future videos to come on my experience with Amazon, Code Whisper, Copilot, Tab 9. I've kind of used all of them, and I have some thoughts, but we'll talk about that in future videos. So I'm going to have this function that is just a dialogue function, and what am I going to return? Well, I'm going to just return for now just a dialog. So I'm going to go dialog. And within this dialog, I'm just going to say this is my dialog. And then within my dialog, I think I'm going to add probably a close button to just close this dialog. And then Within this dialog component, I'm also going to include a button to open my dialog. So let's actually do a racked fragment here, move the dialog within this fragment because when we return JSX within a racked component, you can only return one top level element. So I'm doing that here. I don't have prettier setup in this application. So on save, it doesn't automatically format, which I would definitely recommend, but uh, I think we'll be fine for this kind of demo here. And I'm gonna just have an open button here. So I have my dialog here, and I'm gonna now render this within my app.js. So under this is my app, I'm gonna just go with dialog. And I'm going to render this out here. So if I go back to my app, you see that I just have a button here with open. Now, why is this? Because my dialog is not open right now. So I don't actually see the content of my dialog. I don't see this is my dialog and my close button because by default, this is a closed dialog. So how can we actually open and close this dialog? So let's first use the kind of show modal and close methods of this dialog. So I'm going to do this by creating a ref and I'm going to just say dialog ref is going to equal use ref and I'm going to need to import use ref from react here. So let's import if I could type use ref from react. So I'm going to import that here. And then on my dialog element, I'm going to set my ref is equal to dialog ref. Okay, so now I have access to my dialog element, which is going to allow me to call the close and show modal methods of this element. So I'm going to say function open dialog. And what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to call dialog ref dot current dot show modal. So this is going to open my dialog element because I'm going to access on this ref here, the current property of this ref is going to be my dialog element. So then I'm going to call the show modal method on it. And now I'm going to have a close dialog function. So here, and I believe I'm using the theme of winter is coming just in case you are wondering and i'm going to call the close method here and now within my close button i'm going to do on click and it's just going to be my close dialog function and then for my open button i'm going to say on click is equal to open 
dialogue. All right, so that was quite a bit of coding there. I definitely probably messed something up, but let's go back to my app and see if I can indeed open and close my dialog. So I click open and then you can see this is my dialog and then I close it and it closes my dialog. So surprisingly enough, I didn't mess anything up. So now let's, let's actually play around with this backdrop a little bit. Instead of making it gray, let's do something, I don't know, more interesting. I actually would probably keep it gray in an actual app, but let's show you what it's like to change this. So first off, go into my dialog. How about I just add a class to it equal to dialog. So that will be easier for me to style my dialog here. So I'm going to go to index.css. Oh, and within my overall app, I used display grid and placed my items to my center, which is why you see that this stuff is like centered within my page here. But moving back to my dialog here, so I can access the dialog class, and then I need to use the pseudo element of backdrop, I believe, which is right there. And then for this, I'm gonna set my background color. What do you think? Let's do, let's do like RGBA. So red, green, blue, alpha. So, because I don't want my transparency to be like 100%, I wanna make sure it is transparent. I just said that incorrectly. I don't want my opacity to be 100%. I want to make sure it has some transparency. I think that's the correct way to say that. You'll understand what I mean. So let's, uh, I don't know. I forget how this works. So that's all, all red. So we're just gonna make it partially red here. So red and then zero, zero. And then let's do, yeah, 0.5. That sounds great. So if this works, when I go back to here and I open this, you're going to see that now my backdrop has this like partially red backdrop with an op opacity set to it. So you can still see like this is my app and my open button here. So it's still kind of see through. That's the word I was going for. And that's how you can change your, your backdrop there. So you know, I could also add some, maybe I'll add some blue to it and we'll see what that does to the color. It makes it purple. I'm, I'm not good at like color science stuff. So cool. So now we have like a purple backdrop. So you can see that that can change it to some degree there. So that's how you can adjust the backdrop and play around with that. But let me show you one other way to kind of handle this within React. So instead of calling the show modal and close methods here, let's actually use some state and then set the open property of this dialog to that state. So let's go back here and say const show and set show is equal to use state and then we'll initialize it to false. And then I need to import use state here. So I will, and I no longer need this ref. And I'm going to now set my show for my, no, wait, was it show? I think it's actually my open property of my dialog. I'm going to set that to my show piece of state. So if show is true here, it should open my dialog. And if show is false, it's going to keep my dialog closed. Okay. But now in my functions, my open dialog, I should set show and I should set that to true to open my dialog. And then for my close dialog, I should set show to false here. So I'm going to do that there. And I think that's the only updates I need here. So if I go back and now I click on open and close, you see that I now open and close my dialog here. But do you notice one thing here? I don't actually get my backdrop styles anymore when I open and close my dialog. Although I still have like my CSS here of my dialog backdrop and I still have my CSS property. So what's going on here? Well, when I use this property here of show, the HTML element here of my dialog, it doesn't really like know 
if I'm using it as a modal or if I'm just using it as like a sub component within my page and stuff. So it doesn't really know if I should have a backdrop or not. And if you look at this right here, it says the backdrop CSS pseudo element can be used to style the backdrop that is displayed behind a dialog element when the dialog is displayed with the show modal method. So in order to use that backdrop CSS pseudo element property to change the backdrop styles, you need to use the show modal method like I did in my first implementation of this rather than implementing it with this state within React here, which this is, I think, still a fine way to do it, but I would probably implement it the first way just so I can keep using that, that CSS there like I did initially just to give you more flexibility there. And you can also imagine that you could, you know, pass in some different props here or you could, you know, render out the children and then you could render out instead of just saying, this is my dialogue, I could say children. And then when I render this within my app, instead of just rendering it like this, I could pass in some children here and I could say, this is the child of my dialogue. And then when I go back to my app and I get off MDN and I open it, you see, this is the child of my dialogue. So this would make it definitely more customizable, just like any React component. You could set this up to actually pass like props or pass in some text here as children or whatever you might do and then just render that within your dialogue as well. So hopefully that gives you some ideas of using it within React as well, and also covers kind of that gotcha with the show modal method and using the backdrop. But yeah, hope that helps, and I'll see you in that next one.